Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to talk about water cooling again. So I published a video maybe a year ago about this system and that uh, came out to be quite popular. So I want to give some additions to that and I also want to show you some even better cooling systems. So what you see in this corner is basically a kit. So you can buy this uh, 12 by 24 centimeters radiator and as you can see it fits two 12 centimeters uh, fence and then uh, this kit also comes with uh, this guy here which is a water tank I don't exactly remember the volume of it but uh, roughly three to five uh, deciliters and then it comes with a 12 volt uh, pump uh, furthermore you get uh, these connectors, I think roughly six of this, and the original purpose of this system is uh, to cool your PC components. Therefore, you have this uh, cooler. I don't know if it is for the GPU or CPU, and then uh, you get another cooler which is either for the GPU or CPU. So basically what you see on the left side is a wall kit and you also get some hoses and uh, some other small gadgets. And at, the, at that time when I bought this uh, kit, it was around 75, maybe 80 US dollars. And that was like relatively cheap. And what I did uh, I use this to cool my Peltier coolers. So Peltier coolers, their hot side require uh, cooling because that's where the uh, rejected heat of the Peltier cooler and uh, the removed heat from the cold side uh, ends up. So for example, we, uh, I, I put together this uh, cooling block. Uh, this does not have any purpose, this side. It is just for clamping because it has some threads. But uh, what we see here is there is a Peltier cooler here, uh, TEC12715, so it's a quite strong 15 ampere unit. And the cold side of that Peltier cooler is attached to this heatsink, and the hot side is cooled with this uh, 4x4 centimeter water cooling block. So that uh, water cooler here, this guy here, was used uh, to cool uh, or keep the Peltier cooler cool. And then uh, I also use this thing uh, incorporated in the system as a thermometer and flow indicator to measure the outlet uh, water temperature or the temperature of the water which comes out from uh, one of the outlets uh, after cooling down the Peltier cooler. So I could monitor the temperature of the water inside the, inside the water cooling system. And then uh, this uh, flow indicator is quite nice because it comes with this uh, three-way uh, plastic thing. So you can have this G1 over four uh, threads. So it's very convenient to put these things there and you can attach your uh, hoses on it. And it comes with the electronics, so this uh, shows you the temperature. But for me, that's not enough because I want to be able to log the temperature for example or use different units or things like that. So then uh, we will get rid of this and we will also get rid of this uh, cooling system. So why I show this to you is because I have a much better and much cheaper alternative to this. So let me just remove a few parts and I show you something much more cooler. So this would be the alternative. As you can see, it's a bit less parts. So what I will have in my uh, future system, uh, let's start with this. So I want to uh, tell you or I want to suggest you to check my previous video. The link is here in the corner and uh, check why I use this. This is a flow indicator. So this thing is just uh, spins when the water is going through the uh, enclosure. And then here we have an NTC thermistor, so we can measure the temperature with this thing. And what I will have is 
I will use this huge radiator and then attach a small uh, silicon tube here and then attach this flow indicator there uh, with the thermometer. So I will measure the inlet and the outlet temperature as well with uh, two uh, of these units. And then since I already grabbed this, as you can see, this is a radiator. And you will be surprised, but this is big. So the previous thing, and I will put them next to each other to compare them, but that was 12 by uh, 24. Well, this is 19 by 30 centimeters. So it's much larger. And just to compare them, you can see that uh, it's of course almost twice the width and uh, the length is also a bit longer. Uh, sorry for the weird angles or things like that, but you can see. So if I put it here, let's say, now they start at the same point and then you see that we have uh, gaps here and uh, also up here. So we have this guy and this is actually a car part. This is an oil cooler, but luckily it has the same uh, kind of outlet pipes uh, as we have with uh, like general water cooling systems uh, for computers. That means that we can incorporate it with our parts, which we already have, and we don't have to change anything. And then uh, what we have to do is we have to de decide whether we just use two 12 centimeter fans. So I put it like this and you can see that uh, we can fit two of here and then still we have a large exposed area or we can have six of this and then put three in one row and three in another row and we have a better coverage and usually they have a bit uh, like more rapid airflow. So maybe this is a bit better. So six of this or even you can use like larger fans and somehow cover it. But uh, now just to have some comparison between, between the two uh, systems, I will just put two 12 centimeters uh, fan uh, somehow distributed on this radiator. So then now you can see that we have a much better system and this part here at the moment when I make the video, uh, I will put the link in the description, but this part cannot be more expensive than $15 plus shipping, of course, but we always have to pay for shipping for everything. So this is basically $15 roughly, at least today, let's say. And uh, it's a very decent radiator. So you can see that it's uh, quite comparable with my uh, silicone uh, mat here. And then we have this guy here, which is also roughly $15, depending on where you see. But as you can see, uh, we have a pump with a water tank incorporated. And uh, this is also, this has the same diameter as this uh, tube here. So we we have basically here the wall water cooling system plus the silicon tubes to have the water everywhere. And then uh, we can use these kind of aluminum blocks. This is a 12 by 4, which means that if you use a Peltier cooler, you can fit three on this. And I use Peltier coolers most of the time when I need water cooling. So this is very ideal. And since this has much larger uh, surface area, that also means that this can dissipate much more heat. So it will keep the Peltier cooler at a lower temperature. So if you need something where you need, uh, where you need to dissipate a uh, copious amount of uh, heat, I really suggest you to build your water cooling system with this guy here. And uh, then basically this is all. So I wanted to show you that we now have a new water cooling system. So what I will do is either I will test it with this system. So this is 15 uh, ampere unit. So just by running this on 15 amps, we have 230 watts roughly. I will do the calculation and put the numbers here because I don't remember all the numbers uh, plus the removed heat. So if everything goes well, I can test this with more than let's say 300 or even more than 400 watts. So we will see how the temperature uh, changes. And as I said, uh, 
we will use this kind of flow indicator with the thermometer in it, uh, which means that we will be able to monitor the inlet and outlet uh, water temperature. So we will see how much uh, cooling is actually done when the water is running through this uh, cooling system. So I think uh, this is a quite exciting part because it's crazy cheap. And if I put this uh, cooling system together, for example, this, uh, what you see here, and even let's say we use two 12 centimeter fans. So one more fan plus uh, this thing, plus this thing, this is not more expensive than $50. However, the water cooling system with this guy here and uh, this guy here, this here plus the GPU and CPU uh, coolers, it costs more than $80, $75-$80. So you get better cooling, I, I believe, better cooling for fraction of the price. So two thirds of the price. So you sh should really think about uh, doing some tinkering and DIY and make a decent cooling system. And it might be that uh, this is also quite good for PC water cooling. So if you want to use it to cool your CPU, then you might uh, use it. But at this moment, I cannot tell you, I haven't tested it. So this is straight out of the box uh, because I finally received this thing and some other parts. So this is straight out of the box and I haven't tested it, so I cannot tell it right now if it is good or not, but I strongly believe based on uh, just the dimensions of this thing and uh, this pump that we will get some better numbers. So in the next part of this video, uh, what I will do, I assemble this system. I will create some sort of test bench. So in the beginning, I will just uh, show this with the 15 ampere unit, but uh, I will also try it with something else. Uh, I have a cooler block. You should check my other video where I actually, I was talking about the other CPU cooler or water cooling system. I have a, a cooling block with four TEC12706 uh, unit. Uh, so basically they are attached to an even longer water cooling block than this and uh, some heat sinks and stuff and uh, they are used to be cooled with some kind of water cooling system and they provide some cold on the heat sink so i will try that uh, also with this system probably so we will see so i will just assemble everything i will move to another table and we will do some basic tests on this and we will see how it performs so this is the assembled stuff with some other circuits and uh, other devices. So let's go to our uh, water circuit first. So this is the Peltier cooler here. Uh, in this block we have the 15 ampere unit here. The hot side is cooled with this 4 by 4 centimeter water cooling block. And the cold side is exposed uh, by using this uh, 4 by 4 centimeter heat sink. The other heat sink doesn't do anything. I just used this once again uh, because there is a thread here and there, so I can uh, use this heat sink as just a simple clamp. But uh, there is no other purpose. And this uh, Peltier cooler will be driven with this large power supply, which can put out 30 watts and 20 amperes max. So I can run this on the maximum 15 amperes and I will do that because I need to generate a lot of heat to test the uh, capabilities of this uh, cooling system. So let's say that we started from here. So water came in uh, from the pump there. So that is our pump plus uh, water tank. Uh, I will show it to you from a closer perspective soon. So then the hot water goes out and before it enters uh, the uh, radiator from the top we measure the temperature by this uh, thing that i showed you so this uh, flow 
indicator has a thermometer in it and here I have my circuit which I built in another video it's still on the breadboard but uh, I will finalize it and I will put it in a box but uh, so this uh, circuit will show us the temperature of the water which enters the radiator and then the water goes down and uh, passes through the uh, tube inside and then it leaves uh, the radiator here and then we measure the temperature here again so that will be after the cooling so we can see what is the difference between the two uh, systems and then the cold or cooled water goes into the pump and then it just gets pushed back to the Pathia cooler and uh, I could have uh, made this much uh, shorter so I could squeeze this uh, more but uh, I did not want to cut my uh, tubes or hoses so it's a bit messed up system but this is all and then we have this electrical contact here and I cannot emphasize enough that uh, these kind of clips are extremely cool and very very reliable uh, check my description to uh, see what I'm talking about I put this there as some kind of uh, spring terminal clips so you can buy this box with uh, or you can buy these clips in a box with different uh, number of uh, terminals but basically I made a 12 volt connection by this so all the positive and negative sides from the pump and the two fans uh, come in here and then finally I will use this uh, DC jack plug 2.1 millimeters to connect it to this power supply uh, the black one here also in the description uh, which provides 12 volts and roughly 1 amperes for the wall thing uh, this system the STM32 circuit is just driven from uh, USB so I will use a USB cable here and then we will see the temperatures so once again this terminal is very cool it's very very uh, useful and it can withstand quite high currents so you can use it even for the Peltier cooler itself now I'm using banana plugs but uh, you can exchange that so now I will rearrange this thing because of course I don't want to blow the air against the wall because actually the uh, fan is pushing through the uh, radiator so the fan pushes the air through the radiator now even it seems like that it should come this way but no I tested it and also the arrows show that the air goes inside so that's what we have I will probably rotate the wall system by 90 degrees so the air will go in that direction and uh, this uh, thing will be closer to the power supply however it doesn't matter I have the cables but uh, it's just more comfortable so I rearrange everything and then we run a test so I set up everything it's a bit uh, maybe over complicated but I explain you everything so the Peltier cooler is connected to that power supply and we will run it at uh, 15 amps and we will see what is the voltage so we can calculate the rejected heat uh, I will measure the temperature of the cold side just for fun uh, that will be done with this four channel uh, digital thermometer check the link up there in the corner uh, you can see how I built this and you can build it uh, yourself it also saves the data to an SD card but for this experiment I will not use it and then we can go further from this so we also monitor the room temperature here and I can tell you that now it's uh, 24.2 degrees Celsius then I also put one thermometer here in this uh, water tank so we can see what's the temperature of the water but we already measure it here uh, and then you see this cable is running behind the radiator so that is just measuring the air temperature uh, which is leaving the radiator so we will see uh, what is the water temperature and what is the air temperature which already passed through the radiator and if there are any differences and so on and so on uh, so yeah once again that circuit is connected to the inlet and outlet of the radiator uh, and it will measure the temperature now both things show around 23 point 
five degrees roughly it's fluctuating but i uh, haven't really uh, did any averaging or something so the values are jumping but uh, we can see for sure it is roughly 23.5 so that's all and now i just connect the pump and we will see what happens So this uh, tank and pump uh, is already on and it is already running and it's quite silent, which I really like about this thing. It's much more silent than my previous thing, this guy here. So this is very loud, but that is not loud at all. So we have the system running, cooling is already enabled or it's running, uh, fans are also uh, running. And of course we don't have any temperature change because uh, nothing is being turned on or something so i can see that the flow indicators are spinning however one is a bit uh, stuck this but it's just a piece of plastic so it's of course it's not the best so let's see our power supply so now i haven't connected uh, or haven't turned on anything here so I just max out the current and then slowly increase the voltage until we reach, I don't know, 15 amps. So 15 amps through these wires, they are already a bit warm and uh, 16.97 volts. So I put a calculation here showing the uh, wattage. And this is already crazy cool. Uh, I can see that the temperature of the heat sink here is 6.5 degrees Celsius. So we will see. And I don't know if it's visible on the big screen, but here is the display. And the first uh, thermometer is this one here which is coming out from the uh, radiator. So this is the outlet. And obviously the higher uh, temperature is here, which is the inlet. So you see that the water is already quite warm, 28 degrees, but we have like a two degrees uh, drop between the two temperatures. So now I uh, want to do only one thing is that uh, we have a lot of wires here and this will collect all the moisture in the room so I just put a paper under it so if I touch it it's crazy cold it's actually minus seven degrees already and you see it's exposed to the environment and so on so it's very uh, like vulnerable to the moisture so I can already see the ice co uh, being collected on the surface and I just increase the current a little bit. So I want to maximize the use of this thing. So I want to run it on the maximum. And these cables are crazy hot. I can still touch it and hold my fingers on it for yeah indefinite amount of time, but it's hot. And of course, these are thick wires. The 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 blue ones so they don't do anything so as a comparison uh, the digital thermometer which is inside that tank says 34 degrees here in the water and this thermometer tells us 32 degrees so there is like two degrees uh, difference but that's uh, for me it's an acceptable uh, difference but now what I should do is we should wait for let's say 15 minutes and after 15 minutes I will check uh, back and uh, tell you all the temperatures and we will see uh, how good this thing can uh, keep up with the generated heat. So let's check back in 15 minutes. So let's check what we have after 15 minutes. Uh, as you can see uh, the current dropped down because the temperature of the unit increased 
and that is also visible on the cold side temperature of the Peltier cooler because uh, from roughly minus 7 degrees it went uh, up to minus 2.2 degrees Celsius so that's very bad uh, we lost 5 degrees and then what I can also tell you is that uh, I changed this thing a little bit and on the back side of this uh, so on the other heat sink I squeezed in one of the digital thermometers and now that is showing us 44.7 degrees and that is relatively close to the temperature 2 which is uh, the same line of water here and it's measured here so that is 42.5 let's say so it is uh, more or less close it's a different measurement techniques because this is a digital thermometer here and that is an analog it's an NTC type of uh, thermometer so we can say that our inlet temperature here, so the, the water temperature before entering the uh, cooling system, it's roughly 43 degrees, let's say. And then after it leaves that, uh, based on this guy here, another NTC, it is roughly 40 degrees. So let's say we have 3 degrees drop, which is very bad. And then here, uh, the digital thermometer says 43 degrees. So again, uh, these two techniques are a bit uh, different in terms of uh, accuracy and precision. I don't know which one to believe, but uh, let's say that the average of them is the truth. And uh, therefore that also shows like two, three degrees drop uh, between the hot side and uh, the cooled water. So that's not so good. And then what I can also tell you is the room temperature is 25.5 degrees maybe it's a bit uh, lower because now i was close to this uh, unit here i was measuring the room temperature here and uh, that, that might be something different but uh, what i can tell you from this experiment is that i think that the temperature drop between the inlet and the outlet of this uh, radiator is uh, just two three degrees and that's not sufficient and uh, I think I know what to blame here and that is the fans because the fans are generating quite low airflow basically I cannot really feel it so I think in the next video I will test this system again with uh, better fans either I replace this with more uh, 8 centimeter fans because they they produce more airflow or I just uh, replace with two 12 centimeter fans but uh, at this time I will use my uh, high RPM fans so they create quite a vigorous airflow and uh, if I repeat the same experiment uh, I could uh, maybe expect some better uh, numbers for example a better temperature drop uh, in the radiator so the purpose of this experiment was to see how this uh, system can work and also I wanted to demonstrate to you a much cheaper system uh, for water cooling I think this is uh, much better than than the other system in terms of uh, capacity for example also it is more silent the only noise uh, which is generated by that pump is that uh, it's caused by the table so it's touching the table and it causes vibrations but if I remove it you can barely hear anything I put it back and now you hear the vibration but if it's uh, not touching any kind of surfaces or we have some kind of uh, rubber in between the surface and uh, the bottom of the pump then uh, you are 100 percent sure that it is no there is no noise generated so now you hear the noise of this thing but i can show you that if you put something in between the surface of the table and the bottom of that pump you just get rid of all the noises so it's much less audible now so yeah I wanted to demonstrate you this system I wanted to show you this kind of uh, thermometer here and I just wanted to show you how the temperatures are changing when you put significant amount of heat into the system so now I concluded that the fans are not so powerful so since we have these poor fans regarding their uh, performance 
uh, we don't have sufficient airflow in between the fins of this uh, cooler or radiator therefore we cannot uh, create more significant uh, temperature drop between the inlet and the outlet and I think that this can be improved by a better fan uh, configuration so I will try that in the next video but uh, I think I could demonstrate this to you that uh, you can build a quite nice uh, cooling system with very cheap components so basically you just have to buy some hoses that uh, tank plus pump integrated uh, thingy and then you have to buy this uh, radiator which is much better and much bigger than the other radiator uh, which is like a dedicated radiator for uh, PC for GPU or CPU cooling and yeah so basically this was the video it was more like an experimental and demonstrative uh, video I hope you learned something I hope that uh, this was useful to you and you can for example use the knowledge uh, for the MTC uh, thermistors or you can use the knowledge by knowing about this uh, cooler I just uh, stumbled upon this uh, cooler by chance so I did not know that you can sort of recycle car parts in such a good way so for me this is very good and uh, yeah so I will put uh, all the details on my website as well so don't forget to visit curiousscientist.tech for all the parts and uh, extra information always read the description of the video please because I see that a lot of people are not reading the description and they are demanding everything in the comments but everything is already given in the description so please read it and don't forget to subscribe if you have any questions or want to discuss something then please leave a comment and see you in the next video